The exponential function is probably the most important function in calculus. A rigorous definition of the exponential function e to the power x is that it is limit, as capital N goes to the infinity, of the sequence 1 plus x divided by n, and that raised to the power n. This definition is, however, rather difficult to work with. We will start with a simpler definition, and later we see that the simpler definition we give here is actually this rigorous definition already shown on this slide. 2 to the power 2 is an abbreviation of 2 multiplied by itself. We all know that uh, 2 to the power 2 is 2 times 2, which is 4. But what means uh, 2 to the power pi? Pi is an irrational number. We cannot multiply 2 pi times with itself because pi is not an integer. For positive integer p, a to the power p is defined recursively by setting a to the power 1 is a and a to the power n plus 1 is a times a to the power n. If a is different from 0, then we define that a to the power 0 is 1 and a to the power negative of p is 1 divided by a to the power p. Let n be a positive integer and a a positive number. We defined the nth root of the positive number a as the positive number b for which b to the power n equals a. This defines the positive nth root uniquely, and the notation for this is that b is nth root of a, or a to the power 1 over n. If p is an integer and q a positive integer and a a positive number, then we define a to the power p over q as a to the power 1 over q, and that raised to the power p. Just a moment ago we defined the qth root of a, so we apply that definition to a to the power 1 over q, and we raise that to the integer power p. And this defines a to the power x for all rational numbers x. We still have to define a to the power x for irrational numbers, so if rho is an irrational number and a a positive number, then we may find a sequence of rational numbers rn which converges to rho. So we choose a sequence rn such that limit of rn is rho, and then we defined a to the power rho as limit as n goes to the infinity of a to the power rn. And now the function a to the power x is defined both for rational and irrational values of x. Powers of positive numbers a have the following properties. a to the power x plus y is a to the power x times a to the y, a to the power 0 is always 1, a to the power x and that raised to the power y is same as a to the power x times y. If a is greater than 1 and x greater than y, then a to the power x is greater than a to the power y, that is, if a is um, larger than 1, then the numbers a to the power x increase with x. If a is between 0 and 1, greater than 0 and less than 1, then if x is greater than y, then a to the power x is less than a to the power y. So if a is between 0 and y, then the numbers a to the power x decrease as x increases. And the last property is 1 over a to the power x is a to the power negative of x. This picture shows the graphs of the functions 1 fifth to the power x, 3 to the power x, 2 to the power x, and 1 to the power x. Which is which? You might want to stop the video for a moment 
to think about this question with his wits, the answer comes just in a moment. The red curve is decreasing. That is the graph of the function 1 over 5 to the power x. 1 to the power x is always 1. So the graph of that is the black horizontal line. 2 to the power x is increasing and 3 to the power x is also increasing, but uh, 3 to the power x increases faster than 2 to the power x. So the blue curve is the graph of 3 to the power x. So what uh, we conclude is that if a is larger than 1, a to the power x is increasing. And if a is positive and different from 1, then a to the power x is a monotonic bijection from the set of real numbers to the set of positive real numbers. This picture shows the graph of the function 1.3 to the power x together with the graph of the line tangent to the graph of this function at x equals 0. Here we see the same for the function 2 to the power x. The red curve is the graph of the function 2 to the power x. The red line is the line tangent to the graph of this function at x equals 0. And here we have the same for the function 3 to the power x. The blue curve is the graph of 3 to the power x. The blue line is the line tangent to the graph of this curve at x equals 0. We conclude from here that as a grows, the line tangent to the graph of a to the power x at x equals 0 gets steeper. And we defined the mathematical constant e as that number for which the tangent to the graph of the function e to the power x at x equals 0 has the slope 1. This picture shows the graph of the function e to the power x that is the green curve together with the line tangent to that curve at x equals 0. e is uh, an irrational number. It has uh, the decimal point approximation 2.718281828 and so forth. This picture shows the graph of the exponential function and that of its uh, tangent line at x equals 0. If we zoom in close to x equals 0, we observe that um, the tangent line and uh, the graph of the exponential function become inseparable. This means that near the point x equals 0, the tangent approximates the graph of e to the x very well. And this means that when x is close to 0, then e to the x is very close to 1 plus x, which is the equation for the tangent line. This is an important observation. The function e to the power x is called the exponential function. And uh, we will later see that this exponential function e to the x can be defined as limit as n goes to the infinity of 1 plus x over n and that raised to the power n. In this video, I will show the argument that Euler had for this result. Later in this course, we will give a rather rigorous proof of this fact. The mathematical constant E is called E in honor of Leonhard Euler. He used the definition that we gave for E as the definition of E and then he argued by using infinitesimally small numbers and infinitely large numbers in the following way. He wrote that for infinitely small, epsilon e to the power epsilon equals 1 plus epsilon. This is the same observation as we made when we graphed the function e to the x and its tangent line at x equals 0 and then we zoomed in near 0. Near zero, e to the x is 
inseparable from its tangent line. Its tangent line is 1 plus x. So this means that when epsilon is very close to 0, e to the epsilon is approximately 1 plus epsilon. Then Euler argued that for any given positive number x, the number n, which is x divided by epsilon, is infinitely large. So epsilon was infinitely small, x divided by epsilon is infinitely large. And therefore, e to the x is now the same as e to the n times epsilon, because x is n times epsilon. Now here, n is infinitely large and epsilon is infinitely small. But uh, he didn't care. These are not ordinary numbers in Euler's notation. e to the n times epsilon is of course the same as e to the epsilon and that raised to the power n. But we now know that uh, e to the epsilon is 1 plus epsilon. So we get that e to the x is 1 plus epsilon and that raised to the power n. But from the equation n equals x divided by epsilon, we get that epsilon is x divided by n. Therefore, e to the x is 1 plus x divided by n, and that raised to the power n. But n here is not an ordinary number. It's something which is called infinitely large. So what Euler really means here is that e to the x is limit as n goes to the infinity of the sequence 1 plus x divided by n, and that raised to the power n. This is correct indeed. We will later give a rigorous proof of this result using derivatives as our tool. The Swiss mathematician Leonhard Euler was born in 1707. He passed away in 1783. He was certainly one of the most prominent and influential mathematicians of all times.